Hi, welcome. And thank you for joining in our ongoing journey as we face together the issues, the questions, demands, confusions, the advances, the disappointments, and the surprises of our time, of this time. I hope you are deriving some comfort, perhaps a bit of strength, possibly perspective or insight, some support, maybe direction or even guidance to adopt through our weekly sessions together and the thoughts from our tradition that accompany our break to breathe. I know that I continue to look forward to this break as a time of commonality, of community, of shared experience in a safe space, removed from our other places of endeavor, allowing for a different kind of being for just a few moments, but enough, hopefully, to allow us to feel renewed, restored, and refreshed for all that awaits us. This week, I continue to think about the transition that is beginning to happen and that will continue as more and more Americans are vaccinated. As I have shared with you in passing, as fervently as we have all hoped for, prayed for, and looked forward to a return to normalcy, I anticipate that our transition to a non-pandemic world may not be as simple or straightforward as we anticipate. Somehow, each of us has accommodated the sea change in our lives and in our world. We have complained about it. We have grown tired of it. We chafe and hopefully safely rebel against it from time to time but we are living its requirements and its restrictions. That has been no small feat. And we should pause for a moment to acknowledge the many ways in which our lives have changed and that they have changed in response to a dangerous reality that needed our full cooperation to mitigate its effects. So, let us take a brief moment at this point, a pause to pat ourselves on the back and let us do so through our meditative postures, through taking a few preliminary breaths. Let us sit comfortably in our chairs, but with some attentiveness, let us plant our feet very firmly on the ground and even do it again because so often the ground doesn't feel firm within, with, beneath our feet. Let us sit with some attentiveness with our hands, gently resting, unclenched. And let us perhaps unclench other parts of our bodies, our toes, our feet, our necks, our always clenched necks, our stomachs, backs perhaps, wherever the pain tends to find us, let us see if we can unclench those areas. And as we do, we might close our eyes, that's my automatic response or just focus them differently than we normally do on some nondescript point in the distance, softly. And let us take that first full, deep, healing breath. Let us feel it filling us up. We might even hold on to it for a few seconds before we let it go. And we might 
experiment a little bit with taking the breath in and letting it out. We might let it out in a big whoosh. We might let it out slowly as we feel our insides deflate a bit. You might try doing the breath to a count, a count of perhaps eight going in, four to hold and relish the feeling of the fullness and seven to release it. And then we might spend another few seconds just at rest with the breath emptied out. Let, it, let us try that. And if this breathing induces a yawn, yawn with it. Let it, yet let that be another unclenching because the muscles that we use to breathe in fully are the same muscles that we use with a yawn. It will not hurt to breathe in a sense of accomplishment, of pride even, that we are a year later and we have, had, we have adhered to the rules and the regulations. We have made our contribution whatever it may have cost us to help keep others well and safe. Let us breathe in. even as lingering around the edges of our consciousness is the awareness that most likely we will not have to do this much longer. In thinking about this historic transition that is already imminent in some ways and still anticipated, although certainly on its way in others, I am reminded that the rabbis of our tradition spent a great deal of psychic time and energy on shaping, regulating, and controlling transitions. Transitions made them nervous as individuals moved from one state of being to another. They saw such episodes as inherently unstable and therefore potentially dangerous. The rabbis were most comfortable with stasis, with a state in which all is in balance and therefore inactive because held in place by equal opposing forces. Any progression from one state of being to another upset that stasis and in the rabbi's minds opened the door to chaos and catastrophe. Thus we find the processes of birth and death, of marriage and divorce, 
even the phases of the menstrual cycle, overlaid with rules and rituals, with regulations that control time, access, interaction, personal hygiene, and that structure the individual's transition from one state to the next. These were highly regulated transitions. Even as I wonder what they might have done with this forthcoming transition, I am thinking about the laws and rules that govern the return of a person to the community who had contracted a skin disease, what we have incorrectly identified as leprosy. In order to return to the community from which they had been removed, the afflicted individual had to be examined by the priest, had to wait a specified number of days to be sure the contagion was gone entirely, and when deemed safely out of danger, the person's return to the community was publicly acknowledged. As primitive as some of our ancestors' practices may seem to us from our contemporary vantage point, there is something profoundly wise and comforting, it seems to me, in ritualizing a return to communal life after the fear, anxiety, discomfort, and isolation of illness. In fact, I am wondering if we might not be able to detect in the premature opening of certain states, municipalities, motivated no doubt by a host of political considerations, nevertheless, a certain denial of what we have all experienced. In the rush to put it all behind us, it reminds me of the individual who has suffered a grievous loss, but runs back to his or her normal activities with a frenetic hyper quality that is trying to keep the pain away despite the emotional, psychological, and spiritual cost of attempting to do so. And in the end, prolonging the entire process of grieving by not engaging in a procedure that ultimately cannot be ignored. While many of us have had the good fortune to remain well during this time, and by and large have been spared the loss of a loved one to COVID. And we have largely also been spared the horrors of hunger and homelessness. We have still been part of a collective trauma. Our lives changed dramatically and emerging from the places we have constructed for ourselves, each of us individually deserves our focus our attention, our sensitivity, and even our compassion. Already, I have heard comments from those who are fully vaccinated, such observations as it's odd and sometimes exhausting to try and be a normal person again. I am finding my own reactions to be strangely tentative and hesitant. I knew what the rules were when none of us was vaccinated. Now that I am fully vaccinated, I'm not so sure of the rules and it is making me nervous. I'm looking for a ritual and I'm wondering if the Jewish calendar might be offering us a possibility. Just this weekend, we observed one of the four Jewish New Years. In fact, while the first of the Hebrew month of Nisan is considered the first of HaChodesh, the first of the month of the entire calendar, it has always been observed, at, or it was originally observed as an agricultural new year, the beginning of the spring harvest season, even while Nisan is the first month of the Jewish year. That's the Hebrew month we started just, just on Sunday which also was the beginning of daylight savings time. I found that a very interesting confluence. Um, 
But this Nissan, this, this Hebrew month of Nissan, which we are now on, in, on the second day, I am on the second day as I'm recording this, um, it's the first month of the Jewish year. Not the month of Tishri when we observe Rosh Hashanah. That's the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. The reasons for our observances are a bit complicated, but for our purposes, the Jewish calendar is once again offering us an opportunity, a new year to reassess, to recalibrate, to renew and to restart our lives. As the physical world is moving from winter to spring, from darkness to increasing light, so the Jewish calendar is reminding us that our story and thereby the paradigmatic human story is also one that moves from darkness to light as we emerge from slavery to freedom, from bondage to liberation, from limitation and constriction to a full flowering of the human spirit. And yes, this is our second Pesach in captivity, our second Pesach in captivity. But we are beginning to emerge from the narrow straits, the narrow passageway, of Mitzrayim, of Egypt, into a new appreciation of the blessing of freedom, of unconstricted activity and freedom of movement. So with these thoughts as background, if they are helpful, let us resume our breathing now. even as we are facing transition, welcoming the spring, welcoming the additional hour of daylight and anticipating our festival of Passover, of Pesach. Just 10, 12 days ahead. Let us breathe in and breathe out again. Let us see how much freedom we can bring to all the muscles in our bodies with our breath. We can breathe out and release simultaneously. We might just concentrate on our breathing as an anchor, as an anchor for this process. Or if that is helpful, or on a repetitive sound, or anything that is nondescript enough to hold our thoughts in the present, but not carry us away from this moment. I have found breathing to be the most helpful most of the time. Some individuals use counting or the repetition of an idea, a mantra almost. Whatever works, the goal is to remove ourselves from anything other than what is happening in this moment. And what that will hopefully help us to do is to live in this moment. To be all here at any time, even when we're not meditating. 
to be rooted in what we are doing, when we are doing it, and to be focused on the task, the person, the goal. And save the other the other things that need our attention for a time when we can focus and attend specifically to each of them. We breathe in this moment. this moment of our personal history, this recognition that we are here, present, invested, attentive, And with the clenchings in our body that we are letting go, for these few moments, we let go of the worries and the anxieties and the uncertainties that have become our constant companions. in a way that we may not have experienced before. We let them go. And if we can let them go for these few minutes, we might be able to do so at other times and in other circumstances. By way of conclusion, as we move into this week and the transition that continues, I would offer this poem by one of my favorites, John O'Donohue. It is entitled, For a New Beginning, appropriate to this new month of Nissan, this new approaching the approaching new season of the spring, the possibilities that increasing light communicates to us, the new beginning that is represented by our festival of Passover. In out of the way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered, heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight, when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear. You can trust the promise of this opening, unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure, hold nothing back, learn to find ease in risk, 
Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. The world is awaiting each one of us. And we will continue to journey together in discovery, in anticipation, and in dwelling in that world. May you have a good, safe, healthy week. I look forward to next week together. God bless. Take care.